hello and welcome back to Thronebreaker. We are heading into the deep Scoyatel woods where we most likely, well, almost certainly going to be ambushed by the Scoyatel. And we're going to have a... ears caught Whoa. the sound of a ruckus coming from the camp. Feet! Inglet! A pox upon you all! It was her quartermaster hurling oaths at the peasants she had freed from the Nilfgaardian slave convoy. A few had stolen supplies under the cover of darkness and escaped into the woods. Terror and dread gripped the other freed prisoners. Meave mulled over what to do with them. And Reynard, as always, offered some advice. Yeah, the advice Reynard is offering. What, what's gonna be the advice this time? These are peasants. That's all I got. Alright. They're stealing potatoes! I can't forgive that. Off with their head. It is high time they went off on their own, Your Grace. They are too great a hindrance. They slow our march, divert our soldiers from more important tasks. And now this. Gascon was listening to their conversation. Meave shot him a questioning look. I opposed taking them in. So, for consistency, I now oppose forcing them to leave. We made their miserable lives our responsibility, did we not? Well then, that is a burden we cannot simply shrug off. I can't help but value Gascon's point of view. But I think Reynard is making sense as well. But it's their choice that they want to go. I think it's smart move to want to go because we are... I don't know if I could just go ahead and say that we are liberating the region, but we are kind of making it livable to an extent. We definitely just got rid of some of Guardians. And the problem is, what we need to be realistic about is that as long as they are marching with us, they can only provide value in fighting. And if they don't provide that value, then they're actually just hindering us. So I... I don't agree with you, Gascon, because it doesn't mean that we have to, like, take him along for the whole, whole ride. So what? Are we gonna have these peasants with us when we just, uh, kill Emir? The, we just wipe out the, the Nilfgaardian Empire and we're still gonna have the peasants with us? Well, at the one point, we probably have to just let the peasants go. Also, why are they not slaves? Hmm? I'm all for slavery. Let the peasants stay. Force the peasants to go their own way. What? Why are you saying force? The problem here is, and this is a big one, is that we also not really a good choice for your well-being. Are we? Because you're coming with us into a fight that if we end up losing, the best thing that can happen to you is that they're probably gonna take you slave. Or it's kind of your preference. What do you like? Slavery or death? Because those are gonna be your choices. And prop and brainwashing. So you guys gotta have to go. Meave's eyes narrowed and the lines on her face sharpened. She turned to the peasants. This is an army. We have no time for investigations and long trials. If one of my men steals, his entire regiment is punished. So it shall be with you. As you are unable to keep your kith and kin under check, you must leave. All of you. Today. Once the peasants had packed their few belongings and separated from the column, the Lyrians marched off. They moved much more quickly, no longer having to adjust to the pace of the untrained, bedraggled refugees. But without the rustic singing and colorful farm wife banter to accompany their steps, the march seemed strangely silent. Oh, that's a good, uh, um, good way to put it. I, I like this. It's a good way to describe it. Big fan. Because you can forget it that, like, this is not really a, like a short fight. This is not something that, well, I suppose the the soldiers can entertain themselves as well. But the point is, this is not gonna be like, oh yeah, 
We need fighters. We need fighters. Bomb fight. That's it. No, it's gonna be like a long one. Not like and people are gonna be this, living. Gascon said, furrowing his brow. On the road. He followed his gaze. Before them, beside the road, stood a hut with a scorched thatch roof. Why? Huts abandoned, yet dried fruit and mushrooms hang from the eaves. Famine raging all around and no one's been tempted. I'd send a scout if I were you. The Queen did as Gascon suggested, and sent three infantrymen to reconnoiter. They entered the hut and found only silence, that was soon broken by a blood-curdling growl. The soldiers ran out at full speed, tripping over their own legs. Dried fruit and mushrooms? I hate to point that out to you, like, the mushrooms don't really provide much calorie. Or nutrients for that matter. And the dried fruit does have, uh, like a pretty decent, uh, well, it's pretty, well, it can be calorie dense, but, you know, it's like, I don't know, like, it's also hanging, right? Hang from the eaves. So, that kind of makes me think that it's not a lot. Still, it's food, but, you know. Like, if I did see a, a bag of mushrooms, I wouldn't be really thinking, Oh my god, I'm saved! I'm not gonna go hungry anymore! But yeah, dried fruit. Also, dried fruit is not gonna be something that, that saves you. Because... That's only c carbohydrate. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's gonna help. It's definitely gonna help, but... Like, by itself, it's not really, like... It's it's kind of it's it's a bit of an uh, exaggeration, but it's kind of like trying to live on like uh, cubes of sugar. So that's not gonna be something that it gives you some calories, give you some energy, but it's definitely not gonna be uh, something that uh, uh, I would recommend over like a, a long term, even like two weeks. Okay. Meave drew her sword, convinced a horde of neckers what? or ghouls would soon attack. But her fears proved unfounded. Instead of monsters, out of the hut came a shaggy dog, a torn scrap of fabric clutched in its teeth. Uh, milady! One of the soldiers began, his face red with embarrassment and his hands covering a hole in his breeches. Uh, was dark as a well inside, uh, and that hound, he jumped out at us all of a sudden biting it and snapping. Bad boy, Gascon said with a smile, then pulled a hunk of dried sausage from his bag. Bought by this generous offering, the dog calmed down at once. Well, that sounds a lot better than the dried mushroom. Further examination showed the dog was the hut's only resident. Like many others in Edern, its owners had disappeared without a trace. Their loyal mutt still guarded the premises, waiting for his master's return. Let's take him with us, Gascon said. Otherwise, he'll die here, of his own hunger or someone else's. Good point. A dog can be very useful. Guard dog. Like, it's not even the... Like, oh no, we can't feed the dog. You're like... Well, it, you know, depending on the breed and size. That can be a concern, but the dog is the dog is useful. Like the smell alone, and they also dogs are pretty aware, so they have good 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 hearing, and great smell. And they are fairly aware, so, so we're gonna take the dog for sure. If you can have like a loyal dog, that's huge. A watchful sentry like this could prove useful in our camp, said the queen. Fine, he can join. But he shall need a name. How about Reynard? Proposed Gascon, a cheeky grin smeared across his face. That way, he'll come when you call, sit on command, and always be a heel. <clears throat> always heel, that is. Watch your words, said Reynard, hand tightly gripping the hilt of his sword. Or you'll learn I'm not at all as tame as you believe. Enough, both of you. That's an order. As for you... The Queen took a good look at the dog who still had a scrap of fabric in his teeth. Since it seems you have a taste for the cloth of the nether regions, I dub you... Knickers. Will that do? The dog wagged its tail vigorously, as if thoroughly pleased with its new name. Meave's company marched off, a furry new recruit richer. Sure. Knickers! 
Well, we're gonna have him in the team. I really hope he doesn't suck. <laughs> Alright, Nickers, what you got? Immune permanent resilience. What the fuck? When you play a gold card, summon Nickers from your deck. This unit may raid your hand from for yummy treats. What? That's just gotta be a joke. <laughs> I hope he's just not like uh, discarding my own cards. Okay, so Doggy can be killed, and when I play a gold card, he gets played automatically from the deck. As much as I would like to have him in the team, I think that's a bad idea. Purely because I have too much tinning already. What about Sevier? Zeal, choose a card with order and give it one charge. Charge two. So it's kind of the same thing. Is there like an order strategy that I'm missing a little bit? Because that's kind of what Reynard does as well. And kinda. Very similar. This, this makes more sense when you wanna give a powerful order unit two orders. But Reynard Odo. Oh, they are both okay. I just need to be careful with the thinning because currently I already have uh, so much thinning that I run out of cards. But I don't know. There's no other way to go about it. Oh, that's gotta be a puzzle over there. <laughs> we do love that. Oh, there's a big chest. I don't know. Okay, I missed that. But I don't wanna go back. So screw that chest. We're ignoring it. Can we to do the puzzle against the foggy? Don't let me die, eliminate the ancient foglet. That's pretty obvious. Or wait. Okay. Well, we gotta kill it. Spawn a foglet. We can set it on fire. And go with Va Wagenberg. What is this? Yeah, let's go Wagenberg. Are they gonna move around? Wait, what? Oh, that's problematic. So he's always gonna spawn two foglets. We gotta kill the ancient foglet somehow. That's... That's the hard part. <sighs> on turn end. So this happens on turn start. What if I go like Catch! this? This happens on turn start. But I kind of don't want them there. I can just move them up. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Oh yeah, the Rivian Sapper is the the key guy here. 
Oh. Wait, what? It's gonna be a right good levy. Big and beautiful. Wait, what? Oh, when I kill a foglet, he goes down by five. I see. Stop your yapping and start digging. Okay, that's easier than I thought. Kill him! Okay, this wasn't a uh, terribly confusing puzzle. But, but the problem is, it's kind of hard to get the puzzles right. Because it... It very much relies on on the player how how well well first of all they need to be into puzzles and second of all uh the how fast can they solve the puzzle uh does vary greatly i think <laughs> this foreign belongs to the end shay leave this place at once cursed one or you shall remain here for all eternity aldean that's great so, well, it's just a casual racism, but like he, he just invited us to like stay here forever. This is great. Right? Eldin, you idiot. You gotta, you gotta just say that we're gonna kill you because some humans will think like, oh yeah, we can stay here. That's so cool. No, you can never be. Uh... Obvious enough. Get straight to the point enough. Eve and her companions neared the Moulderwood, a dense, ancient forest of trees whose tangled branches had witnessed the conjunction of the spheres. It was not until King Vidimont's day that a road was finally carved through the primeval thicket, significantly shortening the journey from Rosberg to Aldersburg. Even when peace reigns, danger rules this road, Rayla said. Now, now no one dares travel it. At the edge of the wood, by the road, stood an enormous willow. Its branches swept down to cover its trunk, looking for all the world like long tresses shrouding a woman's face. Meave had an ill premonition. She did not like the sickly sweet aroma wafting from this tree, nor the metallic buzzing of insect wings. She sent a scout to investigate. That's way too detailed about the tree. You can just say it. I smell an ambush. He drew aside the drooping branches and stumbled back. There were men bound to the tree, covered in sap oozing from gashes in its trunk. Its heavy scent had attracted swarms of insects, flies, wasps, bees and beetles. They seethed over the bound men, crawling in and out of their ears and nostrils. Eldane welcomes us to his wood, Rayla whispered. Well, that's just fucked up. You know, fuck the square tail. I I don't really pretend to be the greatest person of all time, but when I kill people, I kill people impassionately usually, and quickly, and that's a big deal. I'm not out there to to torture people or just necessarily make a point big difference i think also you can argue like who cares they're dying anyway but it matters meave stepped towards the tree and saw the men stuck to it were all still alive those the elves had caught recently writhed and howled for rescue those hanging longer merely followed the queen with half crazed bloodshot eyes Oh, I don't know. Let's free the captives. Well, are you to stand there all day? Meave screamed to her dumbstruck Lyrians. Free them at 
once! Her soldiers needed no more prompting and set about sawing at the ropes with their blades. As soon as they had freed the first captive, before even a word of thanks could be uttered, a flaming streak soared through the air and stuck in the tree. The oozing resin burst into flames, engulfing the prisoners as well as the soldiers who had come to their aid. Elder speech battle cries rang out from the woods as elven warriors launched their attack. Nilkaipsia! It's a trap! cried Reynard. Defend the queen! Kill the elves. Alright. Short in battle, nothing special about it. Let's do that. Seems pretty good. Anything else I need to get out? Pretty good. Uh, maybe not that. Reynardo though. Yeah, this this is good. All right. Um. Keep your heads in the fight. They'll seek to blind us with shock and awe. Sure. Duanve Kamest. This artist will be reaping black clad heads. But the thing is, the Scythians are my best guys. It's already boosted. My spirit's willing and how but Oh Black really likes killing the elves, right? Wait, what? Now Hold down a one? See who is weak. Oh fuck, that's problematic. Kill them! Kill them all! That's problematic. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. How am I supposed to do this? He generates 6 value with the archers, and I don't have a way to take it down. And also I'm I on fire. Fail. Ooh, regiment drummer. The fact that Army it's boosted already is gonna turn out to be a disadvantage. Maybe not. No, no, no. It's gonna be fine because it has armor. Nope. Dead. And that's massive. Left, right, left, right. I gotta play the Rivian Pikeman before we play the Regiment Drummer, but should be okay. That's so bad. So I can't have those guys because it's too risky. We can just get Bla Black Rayla out. You'll never take me alive. I really hope he's gonna slow down a little bit. Death to old one. Sure. So we gotta get these guys out. Ours is not to reason why. Oh, I can just get at anybody. Well, having the Arbalest would be nice, but I guess we're just gonna take the Sightman. Hi. Okay. Burn them all! It doesn't really matter where we are playing. Have You're screwed in both places. Life. Hmm. Okay, we can just go with Dodo. Her Majesty is exceptional.
Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. All right. Yeah, just hit them all. No problem. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather oh. while we still can. Well, we gotta hit that. Then we can do a, a Lyria Merlot. Oh fuck, it's gonna go back. The amount of damage we are taking, kinda unreal. Okay, he went back. But this should be good enough. Of course, everybody has armor, so the, the fact that we are hitting him Don't let them is almost completely Finish pointless. Up the wounded. Yeah, fuck you, elves. I'm killing every single one of done. you. Meave surveyed the carnage, her breath still ragged. The thick stench of blood, sap, and ash she sucked in made her stomach churn and head swoon. The Scoyatel. I'd heard of their cruelty, but... The Queen said, sheathing her sword. But I... Never have I countenanced a thing like this. Black Rayla, who had just extracted her blade from between an elven gorilla's ribs, smiled darkly. Worst is yet to come, my lady. The Queen regrouped her forces and marched into the Moulderwood. The Lyrians sang none of their usual marching songs. Instead, they walked in silence, eyes darting constantly to their flanks. That's probably a good idea. So... Pretty fucked up, elven jungle. Well, not really jungle, it's a forest. Damn. These guys mean business. Hear that? Nightingales. Unmindful of war, they sing on. Those are no birds, my lady. Just Scoitel scouts use animal cries to communicate. Tell the men to hold to the road, my lady. Anyone wanders in the trees, they don't come out. Huh. Well, I guess I'm going uh, to take a pee with my 100 closest friends. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.